hash rates could be going up. Plus, Ohio's 16th district representative is not ran again, citing toxic dynamics in the Republican Party. And Ohio football coach Tim Albin speaks before Ohio's matchup with Northwestern this weekend. Newswatch starts right now. Good evening, I'm Nick Veland. Welcome to Newswatch, your source for news impacting southeastern Ohio. An ordinance to increase trash rates in the city of Athens is currently backed by all members of council. This will be an incremental 5% increase intended to get the garbage fund back on track. According to council member Ben Ziff, the garbage fund is experiencing some uncomfortable pain. So council amended the ordinance on Monday to include an emergency clause so the ordinance can be implemented as soon as it's passed through council. Athens Mayor Steve Patterson said one of the reasons for the garbage fund experiencing this is due to COVID-19. The pandemic really, you know, had a significant impact in terms of revenue coming in because there were uh, still the expenses associated with the contract that we have with our trash hauler. Uh, yet, you know, very few people here in 2020 and in, into 2021 as well. Athens residents could be getting free Wi-Fi on Court Street soon. $2.5 million in the American Rescue Plan Act money will fund the project. Athens Mayor Steve Patterson said on Monday one of the first items to be addressed is to develop fiber connectivity throughout city buildings. It will also include camera updates on Court Street and provide free Wi-Fi on Court and West Union Streets. Patterson said that although the money has arrived, some of these projects will take time and any uses with the fund must be approved through council. The city received the first half of those funds two weeks ago. Summer is over and fall is here. Today is the fall equinox. That's a day when every place on earth gets roughly 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. In other words, it's the astronomical start of autumn. Some people think summer ends when Labor Day, with Labor Day and they have a point too. Meteorologists have their own calendar for the seasons, and it says fall started weeks ago. Speaking of the weather, let's throw it over to Aaron Ashley now. Well, Nick, those fall conditions are here, and they might be here to stay. As Athens right now, it's 60 degrees, partly mostly cloudy skies, actually. If it's not already raining, it will likely start raining as humidity sits at 90%. We are expected to have a half inch to three quarter inches of rain with winds from the southwest anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour. Across the region right now, it's very similar mild temperatures in the low 60s. 60 degrees in Marietta, going to be warmer towards our east. 63 degrees in New Martinsville, warmer to our south. 63 degrees in Ironton and then cooler to our northwest. 60 degrees in both Columbus as well as Newark. Looking at the week ahead, rain will persist heading into tonight. Colder lows are expected throughout the nights as we head into this weekend. And are the fall conditions here to stay? I'll talk about this in my full weather segment, but for now, back to you, Nick. Thanks, Aaron. Representative Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio's 16th District announced on Thursday that he will not seek re-election. He was one of the 10 House Republicans who had voted to, in January to impeach then-President Donald Trump. In a statement announcing his decision, he cites toxic dynamics within the Republican Party. Paula Reed has the story. Republican Congressman Anthony Gonzalez is the latest Trump critic to leave Congress rather than face a Trump-backed challenger. He's a fake Republican and a disgrace to your state. The two-term Ohio lawmaker was one of 10 House Republicans who voted with Democrats to impeach Trump for incitement of the insurrection on January 6th, a decision that put him on Trump's list of targets. Adam Kinzinger, Dan Newhouse, Anthony Gonzalez, that's another beauty. Get rid of them all. Still, Gonzalez continued to call out the big lie. And it continuing to perpetuate uh, falsehoods, especially ones that are dangerous that led to the violence on, on January 6th, uh, is a recipe for disaster for the party, but it's also horribly irresponsible. But that pushback has come with a price. 
In an interview with the New York Times about his decision to retire, Gonzalez recounted an eye-opening moment when he and his family were greeted at the Cleveland airport by two uniformed police officers, part of extra security precautions taken after he voted to impeach Trump. Prior to the impeachment vote, Gonzalez was a Trump ally. I supported, I don't know what the percentage, 90 percent of, of President Trump's policies because um, I think they're good for Northeast Ohio. He's a tough cookie and he's a friend of mine, Representative Anthony Gonzalez. Thank you. But when he announced he was stepping down amid threats to his family, the former president responded by saying, one down, nine to go. Among the other nine, Representative Liz Cheney from Wyoming. Hopefully they'll get rid of her with the next election. Cheney has become a vocal critic of the former president and his rhetoric, costing her a leadership position in the House. We have seen the danger uh, that he continues to provoke with his language. Cheney has even said other lawmakers privately confess that concerns for their safety affect the way they vote. There were members who told me that they were afraid for their own security, afraid, you know, in some instances for their lives. According to the U.S. Capitol Police, this year alone, there has been a 107 percent increase in threats against all members compared to 2020. This year, I think, will be up close to 10,000 uh, threats that we're investigating uh, against members of Congress. As lawmakers from both parties face increased threats of violence, the former president continues to focus on attacking Republicans who he believes betrayed him. Like Representative Peter Meyer, the freshman Republican from Michigan who says death threats are just now part of the job. Our expectation is that folks will try to kill us. And to me, the important thing is not to let that intimidate you because loyalty to the Constitution should supersede everything else. Other candidates look to run for the Congress seat. Max Miller announced his run for the 16th district earlier this year and received endorsement from former President Donald Trump. Protesters clashing outside of the Ohio Department of Education in Columbus over the teaching of critical race theory, the State House News Bureau reports. The initial crowd of around 50 protesters included Republican candidate for U.S. Senate Josh Mandel. They gathered to oppose critical race theory being taught in Ohio. Even though the subject is a graduate school concept not taught in Ohio K-12 schools. At the other end of the building, another group gathered, hosting a read-in with books written by black authors. Attendees of the read-in say they want to see more taught about race in Ohio schools. One of, your Ohio one of your dairy products could be unsafe to drink. And President Biden is encouraging people to get vaccinated as there's a surge in hospitalizations. These stories and more when NewsWatch returns. He was bigger than boxing. Muhammad Ali was the most important man in the world. He was larger than life. His magnetism just was amazing. Who is this guy? He was a revolutionary. He was a groundbreaker. What are they going to say about that now, huh? Ken Burns captures an intimate story of victory, defeat, and determination. The price of freedom comes high. I have paid, but I am free. Muhammad Ali. month in Passport on the PBS Video app, your on-demand library for the best of PBS. What are you doing here? Frankie Drake, private detective. I'm investigating a murder. Ted opened up 70 donut shops. They call me Donut King. He gave Cambodian refugees a chance in America. You really are stealing a frame out of life and saying, this is worth a thousand words. These and other shows from your PBS station are available with Passport on the PBS Video app. Download it today. Coming up on the next Song of the Mountain. Winchester Road is just a stretch down the county line. That old road can take you back to another time. When I go all bluegrass on you. Lively performances where old tradition meets new here on Song of the Mountains. Next time on The National Parks, a new leader steps forward to protect America's wild places. Stephen Mather was the right man in the right place at the right time. A federal agency is created to watch over the parks. And in Arizona, a fight over the fate of the grandest canyon on Earth. 
as the National Parks continues. Welcome back. A little of half of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Health officials are still facing the devastating impact of the Delta variant in hot spots across the country. Chris Wynn has the latest on what the president plans to do next. As the White House tries to convince more Americans to get vaccinated against COVID-19, President Biden announced a new plan Wednesday to send 500 million additional doses to developing countries next year. And we need to do our part governments, the private sector, civil society, leaders, philanthropists. The total U.S. commitment now at 1.1 billion doses being donated to other nations. This is an all hands on deck crisis. And the good news is we know how to beat this pandemic. Vaccines, public health measures and collective action. But many wonder how long it will take for hospitals here at home to start feeling some relief. Doctors and nurses across the country are being pushed to the brink as they struggle to handle the latest surge in COVID-19 cases. Overwhelmed hospitals now rationing care due to limited ICU capacity. As this disease spreads, right, it spreads throughout the entire community. It's more likely to catch those more vulnerable people when there's high numbers of unvaccinated there. Nearly 90,000 people nationwide are hospitalized with the virus, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. More than 2,000 new deaths are being reported daily, the most since winter. We are not out of the woods, and I fully expect case counts to go up again across the country over the weeks and months to come. The Delta variant playing a key role in driving up the numbers. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. President Biden also presented a partnership between the European Union and the U.S. to expand global, global vaccinations for low-income countries. New ideas became inspirations throughout the pandemic. In Athens, a local business came to life to bring the joy of going to a coffee shop to your front door. Sunday mornings are normally meant for sleeping in, but not for 26-year-old Daniel Palmer. Wake up around 7, 6.50, 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, and then brew the coffee, and then out the door by 8. From there, he travels throughout the city of Athens to get his customers a homemade muffin and a hot coffee. The simple idea came to him during the pandemic. And I missed donkey coffee. Uh, so I tweeted them and I'm like, hey, you guys should do a, like a delivery service where like you can subscribe for a muffin and a coffee in the morning. When no one else took it up, Palmer took matters into his own hands, creating Cafe Doorstep. Now Palmer's weekends revolve around the business. From sending out the payment request on Friday, to get the pastry prepared on Saturday afternoon in his home kitchen. Palmer said that the profit margins for the business are small, but his love for coffee keeps the business going. And he hopes this is a step towards something bigger. It's never been like a dream to be a baker or open a bakery, but I have had dreams of like wanting to open a cafe. And so this is like a step in that direction, I guess. <laughs> for Newswatch, I'm Nick Veland in Athens. You can find more information on Cafe Doorstep online or on Instagram. Wayne County's Green Field Farms Dairy announced a voluntary recall of its whole chocolate milk. The Columbus Dispatch reports there are about 1,200 units that, of the effect milk that were distributed in nine states, including Ohio and Kentucky. The milk was distributed from September 7th to September 16th. So far, there have been no report of the illness from the milk. You can return the milk to the place of purchase to receive a refund. You may be fastening your child's seatbelt wrong. That story still ahead. And temperatures have dropped just in time for fall. How likely are these fall-like conditions here to stay? I'll talk about this and more in my full forecast, but for now take a look at stocks of local interest. Humans are dangerous creatures, but if you keep them well fed, they're far less dangerous. Jeff Patrick O'Connor. Welcome. Patrick was in the forefront of an evolution. Look how pretty that scallop is. It's either art or garbage. Right now, we're focused on that ultimate acknowledgement. 
Michelin three stars. We all want three stars this year. Now it's even easier to stay connected with WOUB Public Media. Receive the latest news, watch your favorite programs live or on demand, and listen to podcasts or live radio everywhere you go using the WOUB Public Media app. And you'll get to carry me, WOUB radio announcer Robin Barnes, around with you all day. The app is available to download free on iOS and Android. Just search for WOUB. This month in Passport on the PBS Video app, your on-demand library for the best of PBS. What are you doing here? Frankie Drake, private detective. I'm investigating a murder. Ted opened up 70 donut shops. They call me Donut King. He gave Cambodian refugees a chance in America. You really are stealing a frame out of life and saying, this is worth a thousand words. These and other shows from your PBS station are available with Passport on the PBS Video app. Download it today. He was bigger than boxing. Muhammad Ali was the most important man in the world. He was larger than life. His magnetism just was amazing. Who is this guy? He was a revolutionary. He was a groundbreaker. What are they going to say about that now, huh? Ken Burns captures an intimate story of victory, defeat, and determination. The price of freedom comes high. I have paid, but I am free. Muhammad Ali. Hello and welcome back to Newswatch. I'm Erin Ashley, your lead forecaster. Looking at the skies right now, you can see this big cluster of clouds right above our region. That's going to be the explanation as to why it's raining in our area right now. Hour by hour for tonight, rain is likely to persist at 8 p.m. with temperatures at 59 degrees. That chance for rain is going to linger as we head towards midnight with a temperature of 54 degrees with some rather dense cloud coverage. Athens tonight is going to have a low of 51 degrees. Very chilly in comparison to what we're used to and humidity will be at 100%. So if you plan on traveling tonight, that likelihood of rain will linger. And if it's not raining, it's likely to be very foggy. So please plan accordingly. Winds come from the southwest direction at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Across the region tonight, we see mild temperatures in the low 50s. Going to be 53 degrees in Ironton as well as Ripley and Marietta, as well as to our northeast of New Martinsville. Going to be cooler towards our west, 51 degrees in Columbus, Chillicothe and Jackson, as well as Newark, New Lexington and Athens as well. Looking at the jet stream for today, you can see that the polar jet stream is dipping down and pushing up, bringing a cold air into our area. That's going to be the cause for some cool excuse me, some cool temperatures to start off our morning tomorrow. 8 a.m. is going to be 51 degrees and going to slowly rise to 57 degrees with some rather steady winds, but clouds will generally remain. Athens tomorrow is going to have a high of 61 degrees, indicating that fall is finally here. Humidity is going to be 75%, but that's not really going to matter that much, considering that this high temperature is very low in comparison to what we have experienced recently. But winds will come from the southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Across the region tomorrow, 61 degrees in Athens, like I just said. It's going to be cooler towards our northern regions, especially here in New Lexington. It's going to be a high of 59 degrees, and as well as New Martinsville, it's going to be 60 degrees and warmer temperatures to our south. 64 degrees in Ironton, as well as Ripley. Looking at the week ahead, you can expect that temperatures will drop tomorrow, 61 degrees as well in um, on Thursday, but it's going to climb up to 79 degrees as early as next Tuesday. I'll throw it back to Nick. Thanks, Aaron. It's Child Passenger Safety Week and car crashes are the leading cause of death in children from ages 1 to 13. While most families use car seats boosters to protect kids, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says a majority are not put in properly. Mandy Geither has more on how to keep kids safe in the car. On the road, it's the first line of defense in a car crash, but car seats aren't always easy to install. Each car seat is different and there's different ways to fasten it properly. In the emergency department at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Dr. Angela Costa has seen firsthand the dangers of children not properly restrained. When you think of things that like, wow, if we had just done this, 
the outcome would be totally different. It's frustrating. It's sad. Infants and toddlers should be buckled in a rear-facing car seat with a harness in the back seat until they reach the maximum weight or height limit of their car seat. The strap should be at or below the child's shoulders, and the harness should be snug. A certified child passenger safety technician can help properly install the seat and can be found at many police and fire stations. As the child grows, forward-facing seats with a harness should be used. The strap should be at or above the shoulders. Put the seat at the correct angle. The manual will help determine that. Then it's booster seats. Always use a lap and shoulder belt to properly secure it. The belt should sit low and snug across the child's hip bones and away from the child's neck, crossing the middle of their chest and shoulder. Accidents do happen, so being as safe as possible before the accident occurs really makes a difference. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Your child is ready to come out of their booster when they're at least 57 inches tall and they can sit with their back against the seat with their knees bent over the edge of the seat. The belt should still go across the center of the chest and shoulders and across the hip bones. Now over to Joe. Hello, I'm Joe Collins for Sports and coming up, the Ohio football team will travel to take on Northwestern this weekend. Hear from Ohio head coach Tim Album on the keys to Saturday's game. But first, here's a look what's coming up tonight on your public television station. on the PBS video app, your on-demand library for the best of PBS. What are you doing here? Frankie Drake, private detective. I'm investigating a murder. Ted opened up 70 donut shops. They call me Donut King. He gave Cambodian refugees a chance in America. You really are stealing a frame out of life and saying this is worth a thousand words. These and other shows from your PBS station are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Download it today. Now, it's even easier to stay connected with WOUB Public Media. Receive the latest news, watch your favorite programs live or on demand, and listen to podcasts or live radio everywhere you go using the WOUB Public Media app. And you'll get to carry me, WOUB radio announcer Robin Barnes, around with you all day. The app is available to download free on iOS and Android. Just search for WOUB. Humans are dangerous creatures, but if you keep them well fed, they're far less dangerous. Jeff Patrick O'Connor. Welcome. Patrick was in the forefront of an evolution. Look how pretty that scallop is. It's either art or garbage. Right now, we're focused on that ultimate acknowledgement. Michelin three stars. We all want three stars this year. He was bigger than boxing. Muhammad Ali was the most important man in the world. He was larger than life. His magnetism just was amazing. Who is this guy? He was a revolutionary. He was a groundbreaker. What are they going to say about that now, huh? Ken Burns captures an intimate story of victory, defeat, and determination. The price of freedom comes high. I have paid, but I am free. Muhammad Ali. Hello again, I'm Joe Collins. The Ohio Bobcats football team will play their fourth and final non-conference game Saturday when they travel to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. This will be the second Power 5 opponents the Bobcats have faced this season after losing to Syracuse Week 1. Ohio looks to upset the Wildcats, who won the Big Ten West last season before they begin MAC play the following week. Head coach Tim Albin says the biggest key for the Bobcats is winning the battle up front. Propose... Uh a very strong physical in the O line and D line. Uh, Coach Fitzgerald's done an unbelievable job. Um, that's that that will be our biggest challenge, I think, just to help the strength uh, that, that they possess in, in, in the O line and D line. Our guys will have to um, be strong with their technique. The Bobcats are scheduled to kick off at 12 p.m. Eastern time from Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois. For live and post game coverage of the game, head to wob.org. The Ohio soccer team is set to kick off MAC play tomorrow when they take on the Buffalo Bulls. 
The Bobcats and Bulls meet on meet tomorrow at 4 p.m. from Chesterfield. Coincidentally, these two ended last season against one another, so it's only natural they open up conference play this season. Ohio enters the match 4-3 and three on the season, but has lost three out of their last four, the only win being a 3-1 victory over Cleveland State. The Bulls come to Athens with a record of 6-1 and, and have won six straight after dropping their first match to West Virginia. With just 12 games left in the regular season, the Cincinnati Reds find themselves in a must-win situation due to a loss last night to the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Reds started with the lead until Ben Gamble came up the fourth and took Tyler Malley deep to right for his eighth homer of the season. Down 3-2 in the seventh, a great opportunity for the Reds as they load the bases with no outs but aren't able to push any of them across. The Pirates take advantage of the momentum shift as they score three runs in the top of the eighth. The last coming off of a pinch hit RBI double by Yoshitamo Shutsugo to make it 6-2. The Pirates held on the fourth and the ninth as they come away with the victory. With the loss, the Reds move to 78-74 and on the season. Let's take a look at the NL wildcard races. The St. Louis Cardinals won their 10th straight game last night and now have a four-game lead over the Reds for the second wildcard spot. Trailing right behind the Reds are the Philadelphia Phillies who are a half game behind. Now to the NFL where the Cleveland Browns got some bad news after their victory Sunday. Wide receiver Jarvis Landry is heading to the IR list. Landry suffered a sprained MCL in the first quarter of the Browns game Sunday against the Houston Texans. Landry will be on IR for the next three weeks, which is the requirement by the NFL for players who end up on that list. Donovan Peoples-Jones is now expected to take over the starting wide receiver position in Landry's absence. I'm Joe Collins and that's it for sports. Back to you, Nick. Thanks, Joe. These two tiles might look the same to you, but one is actually whiter than the other. Scientists at Purdue University in Indiana have created the world's whitest paint. It's even made it into the Guinness World Records book. This white paint has been identified as a way to help fight climate change. Researchers say the paint can work like an air conditioner. It was made to reflect 98% of the sunlight, which is more than it absorbs. That makes the surface cooler than its surroundings. Speaking of Things are, that are getting cooler. How's the weather looking the rest of the week, Aaron? Well, Nick, if you look at the weather for tomorrow and if you're a big fan of the fall, looking at this high tomorrow, 61 degrees, you're going to be very happy because fall is finally here. Humidity is 75%, but that's not going to matter with a temperature like this, as well as those clouds they are going to rain, remain tomorrow. Across the region tomorrow, you're going to see very similar temperatures. Low temperature of 59 degrees in New Lexington, 60 degrees in New Martinsville, and then hot spots being towards our south, Ripley 64 degrees, as well as Ironton in the south. Looking at the rest of the week ahead, you can expect that temperatures will begin to climb as we head into the weekend. It's going to be 72 degrees on Friday, 71 degrees on Saturday with partly cloudy skies, reaching as high as 75% on Sunday and then even climbing more reaching 79 degrees as early as Tuesday. However, if you look at the lows heading for those nights, it's going to be 43 degrees on Thursday night into Friday morning. And then those temperatures will begin to climb, but they will begin to stay a little lagged closer below 60 degrees. And I'll throw it back over to Nick. Thanks, Aaron. And that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Veland. Stay tuned for the PBS News Hour coming up next. And remember, you can find all the latest news anytime at wub.org. Have a great night. Support comes from Dean Heating and Cooling, keeping homes cool all summer with Tempstar. Dean Heating and Cooling provides HVAC service and installation in the Athens area. Featuring Tempstar quality, you can feel. Support comes from Goldsberry Wealth Strategies in Athens and Parkland.